Again, welcome back to System Analysis and Design course. This lecture has covered the requirement elicitation techniques, how we can gather the requirements. In our previous lectures, we went through different types of requirements, such as functional requirement, non-functional requirement, business requirement, and also the user's requirements. These lectures will teach us the techniques we can use to get the requirements or gather the requirements. And one of the techniques will be interview, and JAD sections, questionnaires, document analysis, and observation. We should also go through the definition, or we're going to define the role that each requirement elicitation techniques play in determining the requirement. Now, requirement elicitation in practice. And this is a few suggestions. We should use every interaction with managers and users to gain an interest and also support for the project. We should choose participants carefully and also we should make respectful use of people's time. Now we start with the interview first. Here we say most important and the most used fact finding techniques is the interview. So the system analysis normally will collect data or information from individuals face to face. For example, it should be decided who should be interviewed uh, among the stakeholders. Again, in a project, we may have different types of stakeholders. But here we may decide that, okay, the users, the managers, supervisors, uh, etc. So managers in early project stages to get a broad understanding. And also interview the staff because staff can provide details and specific later. Staffs can be the users of the system, the information technology system. Also, political issues are important. So this may be necessary to interview influential people, uh, even if they are not too close to the system or they are not even going to use the system and they don't have no knowledge of the system. But this may be, again, organizational feasibility issues, political issues are very important and regulations. Now the interview structure can be a top-down. A top-down interview structure means broad to specific and that's the most common one. We can also have what we call the bottom-up which means we start from the specific to broad. And this is very useful for collecting details. And the question types can be open-ended and also close-ended. Close-ended normally if we need a specific answer and the answer should be either true or false. So here we learn and confirm the facts and details. Now in the broad concept to maybe open, so each uh, role, stakeholder role may have different opinion. For example, the user, the managers, etc. So question type, most of the time, the two can be combined together. The open-ended and cross-ended together. Also, we have the probing, which is to resolve confusion and also doing the follow-up of the interview. Now, interview as a requirement elicitation techniques here we look at the strengths and the weaknesses. The strength here said interview can respond freely and also openly to questions. Also the interviewer can be asked for more feedback. Questions can be adapted or reworded for each interview or for each individual also. Then interviews non-verbal communications can be observed. So since again, this would be a face-to-face -face interview. Uh, and it's a very good strength. Also the weaknesses can be very time consuming and therefore it's costly and also fact finding approach. And uh, because interview involving face-to-face -face again, um, time need to be set up and to be a time consuming. Also, success is highly dependent on the system analysis, human relation skills. Now, one of the 
probably also will be the type of questions, how the system analysis will interact again with the stakeholders or with the interviewers. So maybe in practical due to the location of interviews sometimes also. Now interview the practical tips here is that we should prepare, prepare and prepare, especially the questionnaire papers, the questions we are going to ask. Don't waste the interview with time. We should take notes during and after the interview. Don't be afraid to ask for clarification and also be aware of non verbal that this will be a body language. And this is one of the advantage of interviews face to face, the body language. Also send interview summary as soon as possible. Then we can request confirmation and corrections. Next is the joint application development. We call the JAD section. So this is an extensive and also structured group process. The goal here is to produce a complete requirement definition document. Uh, so here they may do, the members may be doing some more or less like a brainstorming, coming up with the possible requirements, sharing, again, uh, ideas together, etc. So this directly involved the project sponsor, key managers, and the key users within the system. And this will be a, a group setup. And it requires a trained facilitator for the group. And also it requires a comfortable facility for long-term intensive group work, preferable off-site. And it may be expensive, but it's valuable. Now we have the electronic JAD or the Yi JAD. Here we say any group activity may experience problems with group dynamics. A Yi JAD helps group overcome group dynamic issues. For example, be the dominancy, or uh, status differences, or fear of reprisal. And also Yi JAD provides ways for members to contribute, comment on, and rate ideas. Also requires a trained YJAD facilitator and also groupware software. The JAD practical tips here is, first we should obtain training as a facilitator. Possible we may need a professional facilitator for the group. And also the top management support needed to enable the right people to commit to the JAD section. Also following comprehension of the JAD section, we should distribute requirement definition document to group for confirmation and also the, for corrections, also feedbacks. We should also introduce a JAD to organization with small demo projects and possible build on that experience. Next is the questionnaires. So this will be a special purpose document that allow analysis to collect information and also opinion from respondents. So this is more or less as interview, but interview is face to face. And one of the good advantages, as we said, was the body language. Yes. But questionnaire don't have to be face to face. It can even be on email, it can be in a form of mailing, etc. So they may use the same questions, but again, the face-to-face -face is the main difference between interviewing and questionnaire. So here we have a special purpose document, which will allow the analysis to collect information and opinions from the respondents. Also the mass produced and distributed. In the age of, again, internet, normally we can do questionnaire online, which is very, very common. Uh, and we have different applications, even free software for questionnaire surveys, like monkey survey, etc. So the respondents complete the questionnaire on their own time. The facts are collected from large number of people while maintaining uniform responses. Now, when dealing with a large audience, no other fact-finding technique can 
tabulate the same facts as efficiently. Now we have the face format questions. This will be similar to multiple choice exam questions. Also must be able to anticipate potential, potential answers to questions. Easy to again tabulate results. Then we also have the free format questions. This will be more or less like an essay questions open-ended. Response is unpredictable and also it's very hard to tabulate the results. Now, what are the strengths for questionnaire as a requirement elicitation techniques? Here we say most can be answered quickly if proper, properly designed. And it's relatively inexpensive comparing to interviewing in the judge section. Because here again, uh, we don't meet person person. It can be through email, uh, through post office, uh, regular mail, etc. Also allow individuals to maintain and also can be tabulated and analyzed quickly if properly designed. Again, we know interview, we may know the responders. Judge section, we may know them. But with questionnaires, we may not know the interviews, so they can remain unknown. It. Now, what are the weaknesses here? We say the response is often low. How to motivate participation? Sending a mail or email. Again, respondents may decide not to or to. But in terms of judge session, it's in person, interviews in person. So uh, response is high. Also, incomplete questionnaire return, uh, which are uh, worthless, and also tend to be infrazible. Body language cannot be observed. And also, we cannot clarify the vagon or incomplete answer to a question. And also, difficult to prepare a successful questionnaire. So what are the practical tips for questionnaire? We say to develop a good questionnaire, first, we should determine what facts and opinions must be collected and from whom sh you should get them. Now, based on the needed facts and opinions, determine whether the free or fixed format questions will produce the best answers. A mix of types may be ideal. Now, write the questions. Pre-test the questions on a small sample of a typical respondents, not just any other system analysis. Then also use a random sampling if necessary. Next is the observation. Here the participants in or watch a person perform activities to learn about the system. So it's to observe. Now, Use when the validity of data collected using other methods in, is in question. Now use also when the complexity of certain aspects of a system prevent end users from providing a correct explanation. Now the big disadvantage of this method is what we call the auto effect. Now when people know that they, they are being observed, again, their behavior may change. So these are some of the strengths and the weaknesses for observation. Data gathered may be highly reliable, can see exactly what is being done. And also it's very inexpensive compared to other fat finding techniques. Can do work measurements if needed. Now weakness is the auto effect. People may perform differently when they are being observed or when they know that they are being observed their behavior may change. And also work may vary in difficulty and volume. Some activities may take place at hard times. And also the tasks being observed are subject to various types of interruptions. So these are some of the practical tips for observation. We should properly plan for the observation. And also we need to obtain approval and also inform people of your purpose. Conduct observations first when the workload is normal. Then you follow by observation during the peak periods. Also obtain samples of documents or forms that will be used for 
again by those being observed. And also apply the sampling techniques discussed earlier for the observation and review the observation notes if appropriate individuals with appropriate individuals. Now, the last one will be the document analysis. So here we collect facts from existing documents. This document can be a, a, the system manual or the company standard operation procedures, etc. So example of a document here can be the organizational chart or history that led to the project or documentation by the previous system studies and designs performed by system analysis and cons consultants. So this can be the system manual documentation. Also, we need to analyze facts to determine currency. Even outdated documentation may be useful. Also must recognize what is current and what is outdated. Now we need to analyze to understand the documentation. So for example, we should take notes, uh, possible draw pictures if necessary, and use the system analysis and design tools to model what you are learning or proposing uh, for the system. These two can be the UML diagrams. For example, we can use the activity diagram to get the activities in linear order or use case how the system is being interact with the users, different type of users. Again, we're going to cover this in our future lectures. So what are the tips for document analysis? We can employ document analysis well. First, good place to start. The history, vocabulary, key personnel. Also learn as much as you can from the existing documentation. And also people get annoyed, be asked about things you could have learned from an existing documentation. So that will be the conclusion of our lectures. Again, this lectures we cover the four different types of ways or techniques we can use to gather the requirements. And this requirement can be four different types of requirements, functional, non-functional, business, and also users' requirements. So thank you and see you in the next lectures.